You may have heard of the immortal jellyfish before. It's one of the very few animals we know of that could potentially live forever through an incredible process in which it returns itself to a younger state. The jellyfish we're focusing on here is named Turritopsis dornii, and in this video we'll be examining the process by which it achieves its immortality, as well as what kinds of opportunities research into this animal may lead to. The immortal jellyfish is a Mediterranean and Japanese sea-dwelling hydrozoan whose reputation has increased considerably due to its featuring in BBC's Nature's Strangest Events and drama series such as The Blacklist, in which it exhibits its regenerative abilities. Turritopsis dornii is light blue in coloration and bell-shaped, with a luminescent reddish stomach. This animal has a maximum diameter of only 4.5mm and is roughly about as tall as it is wide. The immortal jellyfish lives in tropical oceans all over the world, but is thought to have originated in the Pacific waters around Japan, before spreading through a transarctic migration to its other main habitat in the Mediterranean. T. dornii possesses toxins like most jellyfish, however it is only dangerous to small fish and not humans. It predominantly preys on plankton, fish eggs, and small mollusks such as cone snails. But the most fascinating aspect of Turritopsis dornii, and the reason for its fame, is its life cycle and immortality. To understand its unique ability, we first need to look at the life cycle of the average jellyfish. Generally, after a jellyfish hatches from its egg in its mother's brood pouch, it is in a free-swimming form called a planular larva, which is when it looks like an oval-shaped organism covered in cilia. In this state, it is incredibly small and vulnerable to predators. Next, the jellyfish planula then floats around in the sea until, if it avoids predators, it sinks to the bottom of the sea and roots itself to the sea floor. The jellyfish stays in this state until it gains enough energy to progress to the next stage of the life cycle, the polyp. The polyp is a tube-like structure which usually sticks to where the planula rooted, and multiple new polyps may bud from it, forming a colony. To feed the polyp colony, the structure has upward-reaching tentacles which trap microorganisms such as plankton in the water. The tentacles then feed the material into a mouth which transports the food to a common stomach that all the polyps in the colony share. However, sometimes the polyp colony could be free-floating, attached to large transocean cargo ships, or even attached to living sea creatures. The polyp stage can sometimes last up to several years depending on the conditions and species of jellyfish. Finally, there is the Ephyra stage, which grows from the polyp colony, is free-swimming, and resembles a small or juvenile jellyfish. When fully developed, the Ephyra emerges from the polyp, and then over time develops into the medusa, the final and most recognisable form of the jellyfish. The average jellyfish medusa lives for around a year to a year and a half, even though it can take two or three times as long to reach that stage. So, for many species of jellyfish, they die from old age and that's the end. But not for Turritopsis dornii. The immortal jellyfish has the incredible ability to actually reverse its life cycle. When it experiences extreme stress or major tissue damage, Turritopsis dornii is able to revert from its medusa form back to a polyp. The process is called transdifferentiation, and it allows the jellyfish to then form a polyp colony and restart the growing process. So, by a biological definition, T. dornii is immortal. However, this usually doesn't result in ancient individuals, as most are killed either by predation or a disease in the medusa stage which prevents their regeneration. Still, this natural phenomenon has intrigued scientists for many years, and there have been quite a lot of experiments with the jellyfish. A study showed that T. dornii would perform its revitalization in conditions such as starvation, reduction of salinity, rapid temperature change, and artificial damage to the bell with forceps or scissors. After the stimulus, the jellyfish would begin its relatively quick regenerative process. The bell, tentacles, and some of the jelly-like substance around the body deteriorates, and the now immature medusa then goes through a cyst-like stage where the medusa reverts to many polyps, which then become their own being and form more polyp colonies. Researchers have used sequence analyses on the animal's mitochondrial DNA during the transformation, and one study documented that T. dornii would be able to produce many polyps from its medusa by redistributing its cells and the unique ability to force its own non-stem cells to specialise into new cells. To understand the immortal jellyfish, scientists need to keep them in a lab. However, this has proved quite difficult, and the only person who has managed to preserve them for any long length of time is Japanese scientist Shin Kubota. The difficulty in keeping these animals arises from the very specific conditions T. dornii requires. It needs its plankton intake constantly monitored, and someone to check if it has digested its food properly. Shin Kubota, with his culture at Kyoto University, has reported that over a two-year period the population rebirthed itself 11 times, and also describes his creatures as very cute. Kubota is regularly seen on Japanese media talking about his jellyfish, and has even composed a song about them. Uchi no 
Finally, let's look at the potential human applications of the creature. A part of the revitalization process scientists are interested in is how the jellyfish re-specializes non-stem cells. Stem cells are able to develop into any kind of cell in the body, and in humans they are used at the start of our growth, whilst we are embryos, in order to start building our body. The immortal jellyfish is exciting for modern stem cell research, as the field is expanding, and therefore a source of ethical stem cell production is needed. Stem cell research has some moral and mechanical issues at the moment, as stem cells are only harvestable from human embryos and adult human bone marrow. If scientists can work out how T. Dornii's non-stem cells can re-specialize, stem cells could be produced more ethically and stem cell research would continue to advance. So far, stem cells can be used to repair all manners of diseases which would normally result in death or serious debilitation. An example is that stem cells can be used to replace brain neurons damaged by multiple sclerosis. The immortal jellyfish also provides a good opportunity to study microRNA. MicroRNA are tiny strands of genetic material in an organism which controls gene expression. In other words, microRNA is sort of like an off switch for cell diversification. This is an interesting concept for scientists, specifically jellyfish and hydrozoa researchers, as their knowledge of how jellyfish use microRNA is very limited. But with advanced studies and experimentation, this jellyfish could lead to some amazing technologies down the line maybe even the secret of immortality. Thank you so much for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Also thanks to Will for doing the researching and writing of this topic, hopefully you liked his choice of subject matter. If you would like to learn more about our world, its history and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it, and if you would like to see more from us.